Good evening, YouTube. This video is going to focus on a review of some characteristics that we have learned thus far. Um, and these are just going to be characteristics that can help you discern um, between Cebuano and learning Cebuano through another language, like English, all right? And this can also help you, I guess, with the next video that I'll have, which is like introduction or introducing the Austronesian alignment um, series. All right, so let's get started. Um, so most of you who are watching this video probably speak an Indo-European language, and Indo-European languages are the, the most common languages spoken in the world. Um, they're spoken worldwide. Um, bigger corporations like the UN and um, bigger, I guess, most official languages have an an Indo-European language as an official language in their country, right? So examples of Indo-European languages would be like your Germanic languages that have Dutch, English, German, Swedish, Norwegian, Icelandic, those kind of Germanic languages. Um, some of them would be like the Romance languages like Latin. Latin's the Romance language. Um, Italian, French, Portuguese, Romanian, Catalan, those, those are examples of like Romance languages and you have like Hellenic languages like Greek, all right, and you have like the Indic languages like Hindi, um, or Hindustani, I should say. Hindustani, um, yeah, Sanskrit, those those kind of Indo-European languages, right? But Indo-European languages, I put this out because let's say that you are one of these speakers of these languages, English, Spanish, French, or German, right? Deutsch. So um, they have a common characteristic among themselves, meaning... They, they share a certain commonality that Cebuano doesn't have or doesn't show. So, for example, I'm just going to zoom out for a little bit in this chart. Right? We have, obviously, Indo-European languages. That's their family. And we have Cebuano, which is an Austronesian language. That's their family. Uh, it belongs to the Austronesian language family. right? Um, the first characteristic would be like tense, for example. Indo-European languages... Um, they conjugate their verbs and look at verbs through tense, whereas Cebuano looks at their verbs through aspect. And aspects are like the subdivisions of time. Those are like what what's happening in the moment kind of a deal or at that moment at that time or in the future moment at that time. What's happening within that time zone or that timeline. Tense is more like the past, present, future, right? It can be very simple, just very simple. Whereas aspect has so many, so many, so many time, uh, different types of aspect, depending on what you were talking about, when and how long, and where will it be, kind of be, kind of a sense, right? Voices. So, for example, English has two voices, or at least two voices, an active and a passive voice. And I'll go, I'll get into voice on the Austronesian alignment video, but. These active and passive voice play a part in how uh, we we explain things in English, right? It's the relation of um, the pronoun and the noun to the verb, right? And that's what causes the arguments on the verb or the different types of arguments on the verb, like where the verb is going to be focused on, on who and what and where the action is directed. That's what voice is pretty much going to cover. Um, whereas Cebuano has four voices, right? There's a lot more voices in Cebuano, and I'll cover the four voices in a future video as well. So the voices, um, voices do matter because, again, like Cebuano being an ergative absolutive language, a very ergative language, you're going to have variations of this ergativity with the four voices, and I'll show you that in another video. Inflection. So inflection is another one. And inflection sh is pretty much a word that just changes itself to, to make a different meaning. For example, in English, I can say drive, drove, driven, right? Those, those are all meaning, they all mean something that has to deal with driving, right? Drive, drove, driven. But they're all changed. They're all inflected. They're all changed to, to uh, change the meaning of of the driving that's being done, right? Drive, drove, driven, right? In Spanish, you have that too, right? Um, hablo, hablé, you know, or uh, what else is there? Hablaré, there's that one, Habla, hab, hablaba, 
hablaría. You have different types of inflection that happens in Spanish as well. And French does the same thing. German does the same thing a lot more because of the case systems that German has. Whereas Cebuano doesn't have inflection. Cebuano exhibits something called um, something called agglutination or affixation, right? Um, and the the affixation and agglutination are just pretty much the affixes that happen that um, get attached to the um, to the word. Why is this not? Anyway, so it's it's going to be like the little prefixes, suffixes, postfixes, circumfixes, infixes, that kind of stuff. It's going to happen with agglutination and affixation. Um, and we have our SVO um, alignment for the sentences versus VSO in Cebuano. And the VSO meaning like it's a verb initial language, right? Um, whereas in these Germanic languages and Indo-European languages, you have the, um, subject verb object kind of form. And there's a reason why in Cebuano it's a VSO because, again, we look at words through, um, we look at words through, uh, what's it called? <sighs> aspect. There you go. We conjugate our verbs through aspect. Sorry, I was like losing my trail of thought. So aspect and then a subject object. And this plays a big role too in how the language is going to be laid out because um, once we have an, an aspect or a marker, the subject object then becomes marked. And you'll see that with the ergatives playing a role. Like that's how, that's what makes Cebuano such a very unique language. It, it's a very beautiful language in that way because everything that gets marked gets gets um, placed in a very different position and it's just amazing how it works. Whereas here, SVO languages, they're just kind of, yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys, you're not as interesting. Um, pronoun and noun cases. So yes, um, Indo-European languages do exhibit pronoun and noun cases, right? More so with languages like Romanian and German and Faroese. They exhibit noun cases or case systems, especially Russian and your Slavic languages. They have a lot of noun cases. And the case has to agree with gender, with number, with a case. Everything gets um, gets changed that way, and that's what gets inflected. That's why all of these work in an intricate way. And that was what, I guess that's what also makes the Indo-European languages unique, is because they everything matches in their own different way, whereas Cebuano matches in its own unique way. So they're, I guess they're both really unique languages in that matter. But Cebuano only exhibits pronoun cases, and that's the cases that I um, constantly keep talking about with the ergative case, your absolutive case, and your um, oblique case pronouns, right? Those are the pronoun cases that you have to make sure you use the appropriate pronoun for the appropriate case or idea that you're going to say. Otherwise, it's not going to make sense. And it same works for Indo-European languages. And lastly, gender. So gender exists in, um, in Indo-European languages a lot. You have the um, a lot of them have common, um, commonly the uh, the masculine, feminine, feminine, masculine, and neuter gender. Um, some languages like Swedish and Danish have um, neuter and common gender. Um, and English used to have genders, but it's English doesn't have gender anymore. But if you studied like old English, there is gender, so like sun and moon and all of that, and all of those words would have gender. They had like masculine, feminine, neuter, that kind of stuff. So yes, English did have genders, but as it evolved, it lost those genders at, over time. Um, same with Swedish and Danish, they used to have genders as well, but as they evolved, the masculine and feminine got lost and they were just replaced with common gender, common and neuter gender. So, um, French and Spanish, they also have gender too, but as they evolve, they lost the neuter gender. They only have masculine and feminine. But languages like Dutch, <clears throat> Dutch and Faroese and Romanian, they kept their all three of their genders as they evolved. So it's really unique. Um, English used to have cases as well. Spanish and French used to have cases as well. But as they evolved, they lost it. 
German has cases, still has four cases. Um, Spanish and French lost their cases after Latin became divergent um, into its dialects. Latin, so when Spanish and French used to be Latin, they did have cases because Latin had, I think, six cases. I'm not sure, don't quote me. It probably had six cases. English had cases as well, but as it became divergent over time, it's just, it lost those cases. Whereas in Cebuano, we, again, we don't have gender. However, because of language, extensive language contact with Spanish, some of the, that's why I put an asterisk there, some of the language, um, did borrow some gendered words and that's why there are some gender that exists in Cebuano but those are only in like borrowed words um, there are some gendered words that are indigenous as well but those are rare so that's pretty much a little review of um, some characteristics between if you're a learning Cebuano through one of those common, commonly, Indo commonly spoken Indo-European languages that you might want to have some of these ideas to think about when you're learning Cebuano because Cebuano does um, vary vastly from uh, Indo-European language characteristics. So don't try to apply what you learned from learning your own Indo-European language into Cebuano. So.